Batten down the hatches, fellow voyagers. We embark now on an adventure, plumb like my old riverboat journey in life on the Mississippi, though it be in the uncharted sea of stars. Every bit as packed with friendship, danger, and human courage, the search for Spock. Thanks, Mark. I'm for Spock to once again live long and prosper. Yes. It remind this episode really reminds me of the DS9. Wait, this movie reminds me of the episode Duet. <laughs> because in Duet, a uh, crazy Cardassian man, when he's still pretending to be Goldar Heel, is out. Oh, you can't do anything to me. The dead will still be dead. But it turns out that's not necessarily the case. We can totally bring people back. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about it. not Kirk's son though. He's screwed. He yeah, it is a bit. Card. You just we see him for a total of like twenty minutes maximum screen time across the three films. Yeah, screw him. In fact, he's not even in the film that he dies in, <laughs> isn't he? Wait, what? What do you mean? Kirk's son? Oh, he's it, in this. Oh, I'm, not sh it. I'm not sure if we see him. I don't know, we, do, we do see him die, we literally see him just die, that's yeah, it. He, he's in the thumbnail. He's gonna get stabbed. Right. And he will count as a, as a death for the away team. <laughs> Very important. Of course he is he he. So anyway, how about that weather? What, what's going on with the skies? Right now, it's fairly dark. There's essentially, there's not many clowns in the sky right now. It's disappointing, but all right. It's so nice that interesting point here. where it's, it's the sun isn't really in the sky, but it's still blue sky, very dim. So what? deep blue. What do you mean the sun's not in the sky? What does that mean? Where did it go? It's setting, but I can't see the sunset itself from this angle because it's the other side of the house. Okay. Not sure if it just started raining or if there's some plumbing going. I can't look. <laughs> um, Don't let's see just... what, what. What do I remember about this movie? There is a torpedo I... with some microbes or some macrobes, if you will. Yeah, I, don't yeah, I, I think I've watched this film once, about a decade ago. There's the here only where, multiple decades. Where Spock has sex with I'm one of two his decades students. Old, so. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to mention that, but yes. It may in fact have been longer than you were alive. You've been alive. <laughs> it was... This is oh yeah, you, you tell me when you last watched it. Yeah. The film is also way older than I am alive. Well, yeah. Search but I Spock didn't say it. Well, okay, it's actually older than I was, even older than I am. But, yeah. It's older than all of us. If this movie is younger than you, you're not allowed here. This is for youths only. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I only barely qualify as a youth, but yes. Okay. In that case. Oh, by the way, my version of the movie... My version of the movie is 1 hour, 45 minutes, and 14 seconds. I thought it was 83. So, Wait, when in 84 was it released? Uh, I June? can't easily find that specific. June, sorry, June, June 1st. No. <laughs> Wait, no. That's weird. Uh, searching on Doodle for some reason, the Doodle result says release date 14th of June 2024. I'm assuming that's a re-release oh. that's coming out at that point. Because that's in the future. June 1st, 1984. Okay. I get to be a youth. <laughs> by a startlingly uh, small margin. Alright, 10 seconds. Hopefully everyone has the movie queued up. Found some subtitles. That's good. Press play in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Everyone got to popcorn. By the way, this film released after the after episode six. So episode six doesn't have an influence on it, but episode five might have. 
Because I have to say, see, what's the, the first year? Star Trek movie that I'm older than? Let me just. Uh, oh nine for me. First contact. Good evening. Oh, uh, you know what's sad that we missed last week? We we were watching the first fully CGI sequence in a in a feature film. Hmm. Ah. The demonstration of the Genesis device. Oh, oh. yeah, we we did mention that it was CG. Did yeah, it was I didn't realize it was the first one. And I think I also mentioned that there was actually a, a rendering error, and they had to release it in a version of theaters that uh, where they just had to hope no one was using a peripheral vision. I think they cleaned it up in subsequent releases. So the fact that this yes, is like the a first small picture-in-picture picture thing. Is the implication like Kirk is watching this on a screen in his room or something? He's voiceover in it, so yeah, probably. It's also, this is just two years after the previous film when we thought uh, this is how the last film ended. You little pipsqueaks. Yeah. Maybe you should just stop being so old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have color now. Oh, Kirk's going to insult him again. It's very rude. Yeah. <laughs> you, Kirk, there we go. Well, he wouldn't I have really done it if, 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 if it didn't pause for about three period. seconds. There. <laughs> it's about a top of the year period in the in Spock's life where I'd have been like, ah, oh, that's a nice compliment. But for the vast majority of his life, he wanted to be Vulcan. You don't know me at all, Jim. <laughs> I really wanted and to do the twenty guard salute and just blast to be human was not when he knew Kirk. <laughs> well, not when he really knew Kirk, anyway. Oh, we're zooming out again. We are literally just reusing the last bit of the previous film to start off the new film. This movie's not even that long. We don't need to pad the runtime, guys. What are we doing? <laughs> I guess it's just her. It's only still two going years. with episodic ideas that we can't assume people know what happened in the last movie. It's a two. Yeah. It's a two-year-old film. <laughs> I know I said that a I lot. I know I'm but... a little late finally joining you for this journey. Welcome. Yeah. The title sequence is the end of the last film. <laughs> We can save money. <laughs> yeah, that, Look, that's, we add that's lunch to it. Make lunch. It's different. There's credits. Oh, and this is the scene they read is for... That, uh, they must have done this which has done this. But what other film has done this? <laughs> if you imagine a Klingon bird of play, prey flying through these clouds, it's Star Trek IV. We'll have the same mm -hmm. shot. <laughs> yeah, they really, really wanted to save money at the first one. Oh, just about. Mark Leonard. Star Trek Nemesis. By almost a year. Is this is the first film that is younger than me. Ah. Is this the first time we're getting real Sarek? Mark Leonard, Sarek? Oh, Chris. I always forget Christopher Lloyd. Is a, he's just, he doesn't feel like a Star Trek character to me, Christopher Lloyd. He's like a comic actor. Why is it, what's he doing here? Didn't we have Mark Leonard Sarek in TOS? Yes, that's the point. Did we? I don't remember Did Mark Len. I don't remember that episode. I remember is the Romulan. I need to Google. He was sorry. I don't know, that's such a generation. Hold on. Uh, did you... 
Okay, I'm getting a lot of pictures of the animated discovered. series. Okay, yeah, he was in Journey to Babel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is the movie starting? Okay. Well, we literally are picking up right from the previous film. Continuity in my Star Trek? Uh, I mean, three goes pretty directly into four as well, doesn't it? I guess we'll find out next week. Yeah, we'll certainly see what it is next week. Why does Kirk sound like he's over, like he's behind a door? <laughs> Don't forget John LaRoquette is in this. Is he really? He's a Klingon. Huh? I think in the thumbnail, I think he's the one holding the knife that's, that stabs David. I have no idea who John Lorikhead is. I just saw that trivia recently. It's like, okay. That's the Night Court guy. I never watched Night Court. The, oh, Night Court is incredible. <laughs> else. I've seen it's a couple clips of the original in Night Court. This yes. is fascinating to me that the movies have He's more the interconnectivity on. than the series did. Yes. Excuse, Scotty, that is highly inappropriate. This is a workplace. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, so is this where specifically we get that, that origin for the later episodes, like the more recent stuff where Scotty is talked to the others and said, hey, yeah, it multiply your estimates. It will just, um, Geordie. Right. That specifically. <laughs> And of course, uh, Berlana specifically. What is that poor uh, ensign going to die? Do this. Talking about, oh, I hope we get a hero's welcome. That feels like he's going to die. There's an episode in Stargate where they're repairing the uh, the Stargate. And the engineer, I've forgotten his name on top of my head, says to General Hammond, best is... 24 hours, I think he says, and then General Hammond says, you got 12. He says, nope, best I can do is 24 hours. Is that hours. carpet underlay then, in um, the turbo says, lift? Okay, with Very it, important, then. that ship. Does anyone recognize that ship? It was in TNG. That was the Shelyak colony ship. Sila, probably. Huh. A Klingon? Chris, I can't... Speak English again for no reason. Christopher, I just can't take you seriously as a villain. Oh, I like his puppy, though. 88 dog. miles per hour. That's a very good dog. Was it a triangle ship? No, sadly. It was the ship of the lawyers. How does it, how does the data have footage of the bridge? Don't worry about that. They, they from the the camera, the security cameras. Remember from the menagerie. My point is, like, how do they have even even if you talk about they have cameras, which yes, they shouldn't. They do. How do they Heroes have footage from the bridge of the Enterprise? The, he the someone has. It. From the Enterprise is giving them the, the footage in that disc. It, it's the only logic. Which maybe is what the film is going to tell us, but. <laughs> Don't ask questions. Shut up. 
So between two and three Kirk re-recorded the Genesis device tape. But why does she have to die? Like, I get killing them. That's fine. Why is they killing her? I thank just fuck have, I made it this she time. She should just have them disable their, uh, deactivate their shields and then to, no say, to get their payment in rotation marks and then they beam her off before destroying the ship. Oh, we could have beamed the people on board and fed them to the Targ. That would have solved two problems. Yeah. No, it's not would. would have been so convenient. That looks like a different Enterprise one in the show. I think it's the first Targ. Also, Space Dark. We... Oh, when's the next one we see? Do we see one in TNG? I know we see one in Enterprise. Yeah, they're much they're much more pig like in the future. I know it's the same model. Nice black outlines on everything, making sure it comps in correctly. Yep. <gasps> A new ship? Excelsior. But what class is it? I think the accepted headcanon is that the transwarp stuff. Yes, thank you, Sulu. That the transwarp stuff was like a success, and that's why they had to redo the warp scale. Hmm. Transwarp just means faster. I, I think the shoulder headcanon would be that it worked, but not to the extent that they were intending it to. So it basically does improve the efficiency of their warp drives. Am I supposed to recognize her? No, that shot is actually really, really cool. Yes. It is fascinating that they dot inside Yemen the Rand. star, basically. Oh, that was Yeoman Rand. Oh, Thank okay. goodness they didn't use the regular version of the phrase, if my grandmother had wheels she'd be a bike. Village bicycle is British slang for someone who sleeps with a lot of men. Oh. Soma, is that true? What? Sorry. The thing about saying someone is a bicycle? Village bicycle. I believe I've heard okay. that. Yeoman Rand reduced to uncredited lady looking out so of the window. I haven't heard anything along the lines of that. Yeah, they, they wrote Yeoman Rand out of the show after, what, season one? I know we literally just finished watching TOS, but you know, it's a lot to remember. They've actually got putty armor. <laughs> it's... Yep. Goalie armor. The room's clearly been unsealed. Yes, I confirm bike is a pretty derogatory term in UK. They not do that in the future. Um... So we're st we still don't know what the mystery is. We don't know what the mystery is? Yeah, like, uh, why is McCoy acting this way? Hmm. 
He's hanging out, man. How long is your movie again, Ryan? One hour, 45 minutes, and 14 seconds. Oh, wow, we had the same version for once. They reused a lot of sets, obviously. Yeah, that's what he's, he's... He literally just told you that, Jim. He wants to go home. To Vulcan. Did we see the Excelsior class already? Yeah. Okay. So, was Spock just really bad at this? Because Thrust Captain Barco. Archer got a Kadra in him, and he was pretty much fine. That was Spock was, did it as he was dying, so... In maybe theory, it was the dying Enterprise looks more damaged compared to the Wrath of Khan. Actually, yeah, sorry, yeah, he did it before he entered the chamber, because he knew it was doing, yeah. Therefore, when they put his Katra, he didn't upload his mind somewhere, he uploaded a copy of his mind. Spock so did the, the remember Spock mind meld in a bit of a rush. Death. Yeah, you're right. It would have to be a copy of his mind because he was still able to do the whole radiation thing. Uh, Plus, there'd be no movie if there wasn't a mystery. Did you guys cry when Spock died? No. It was a very emotional scene, actually. I already, know it, I already knew it didn't stay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It was a really emotional scene, though. Well acted. Um, In fact, Spock is alive um, right now. He's a little baby Spock. These uniforms are, are a little more sweater. Like, there's a sweater poking through compared to, like, last time. I guess it's the same. Ah, uh, Federation should do the Klingon method. Execute everyone in the room. <laughs> I, I just want to say the Excelsior model was really beautiful a couple of minutes ago. And this Klingon ship model is really stunning. A sparklet. So I'm guessing this is just they intercepted and decrypted a transmission. Instead of yeah. a a spy. Oh, more reused footage. Wow, we're saving so much money. <laughs> in fact, we're going to reuse the same footage again in the next movie. Yes, yes, we've already seen this, Gene. Move it along. Keep the story going. Could they not afford BB Bench? So this film really upgraded the Klingons. It wasn't even TNG. Interesting point from a Klingon. Ah, oh, he's mocking them. Yeah, I mean, it's really well done. Like, um... My lord? They're gonna use it to build homes and farms? You could make a military outpost with that. I think they're building what it for the Shakespeare uh, Macbeth thing. They're a feudal society. Oh, I forgot. So this is, is it just basically... me that that can't see him as a villain? <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a comic actor. Oh, it's a no birth class. Here we go. Oh no! Very nice. Sign. Oh, they're screwed. <laughs> no, you fools! That's almost as bad as being in a Miranda class. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's worse. It's... Miranda class at least has guns. Yeah, but it's much worse because it's literally a scientific observation vessel. Oh, did we already yeah. see Riding Crop Captain? Who was that guy? And uh, the NCC was 638. So because it's such a mini ship, 
It has a mini Vulcan salute, NCC. Vulcan salute, Vulcan salute, Vulcan salute. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Do you, uh, do you want to go on an away team, David? Is is Kirk's son named Marcus now? His, Dr. his Marcus. full name is David Marcus. Yes. That's, yes, David okay, Marcus. Sorry, but sorry, I'm surprised sorry. he doesn't have the father's name. Why um... would he? He just met the dude. <laughs> like 20 minutes ago. Thirty nine point four. Jesus. The... The special effect, the the screen effects. Nimoy are like purposefully a step up. mocked this ship by having the chairs be pink. He was always called <laughs> Marcus. <laughs> yeah, I guess he was always called Marcus because he didn't know right who his father was. But I guess, I mean, he knew, but <sighs> yeah, we don't really do it. these old timey patriarchal traditions in the future. Well, why do you even need a last name then? To identify I... people, because there's like billions of us. Yeah, just give them a number, dude. Yeah, we already do that now. Everybody is a number. It's heritage. You know, if your last name's Potter, that means someone back down the line. They were doing pottery. Didn't this movie have the Romulans as the bad guy at one point? So your last uh, name's Smith. You probably yes. Iron hammering an anvil at some point uh, originally the bad guys were supposed to be romulans and the the uh birds of prey were supposed to be romulan and then they became clan i was rewatching the nagilam episode so that's season two episode two of tng and the romulans come out of nowhere and it's obvious that they're just like bringing in the like remember those aliens that were supposed to be a big deal uh, one season ago psych so, um, they're a little more expensive, I guess, to bring on Romulans. I think it's more expensive to do Klingon makeup. Captain. His, the fact that he doesn't want to tell Starfleet they found something concerns me, but I do appreciate that he's not just going to beam up any rando life form that they scan. He did, yeah. so he yes. did an uh, officer exchange the with of a, um, was a literal Romulan ship. The bird design under what the bird that? of praise wings was supposed to reflect that. Yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be a Romulan ship. What was the what was the species that um Wesley that they did a officer exchange when they had the bacteria on, on the ship on the Enterprise D and then Wesley met one. Um they had like that breathing device and they had, like, I think a fish. it's hard to make an action movie oh, with the, the Romulans the because people. they're so coldly the methodical. Games. The Benzites. Yeah, Benzites. Benzites. Yeah. yeah. So this this captain did a did a stint on a Benzite ship. So he doesn't want to report anything until he's fully figured it out. Ah, of course. Benzin. Benzin. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Nemesis uh, needed to we... invent an entire slave race just to make them work in a movie. <laughs> yeah nemesis was a real mess as far as writing they could have just hired one of the show writers all of them and done a better job oh this is the first signs of um bendai syndrome it was very emotional and as we all know, Nemesis didn't work at anything. Yeah. But, what are you um, talking about, Sarah? You're making a lot of assumptions. That's true. He's angry at Kirk. But I just want to say Sarah is such a great character that we get to see him in TNG also. I just kind of... And this is the original actor from uh, the TOS also. So he's one of the few to bridge. And um, he made a significant impact on Captain Picard. So his character was also mind melded to between the series. Why didn't you just read his mind, Kirk? You're supposed to know what he's thinking. 
I'm sorry but after seeing Nostalgia Critic's review I can't watch the mind meld scene without hearing Bilbo Baggins. <laughs> okay. Are you gonna, uh, like, a brave little hobbit in the middle of the Shire? Um, so if Sarek mind melded with Kirk, and then Sarek mind melded with Picard, Picard, through the transitive property of mind melds, did, did Picard mind meld with Kirk? Look, yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Picard, Picard has a Chris lot of information mind melding his head. Yeah. Like, he knows about the Discovery and its secret program. Yeah. In Star Trek Six, it's implied that, like, you don't take all their memories. You just take what, like, what you want. So you like, have to, like, dig, dig in a little with, bit. With Romulan Lady Valeris, that's what her name is. Spock had to, like, fight to get the specific information. So I assume you. Can she was fighting him, but if he if they give yeah, freely, it's it's not a but total what, information. Sarek wouldn't give secret information freely. You're right, and yeah, Picard yeah. wouldn't dig for it. So I I think we can say Picard is in the dark. Well, I, if he might know that he might know that. Oh, I got a huge one. Uh, I, I got a Korean fried chicken, and it is amazing. Um, Sarek is making assumptions because Kirk was not the one he mind melded with. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, I, I see you've seen the movie as well. <laughs> I'm just following along with the plot. Yeah, Sarek, that's how death works. I don't know if you've heard. It's it's sort of an old concept. Uh, they brid I gotta say, the music for this movie was really amazing. Um, and they bring in the eerie Vulcan music. I think they reused this for Star Trek Six or something. But uh. I know Ryan has said that he believes you should take away all the mystical components. Horner yeah, did Spock it again. Shouldn't have a soul. Spock should be dead. So we <laughs> can't have this. We can't have this. Katra? No Katra? No Katra. No. It doesn't make sense. Like He, he couldn't have transferred his whole soul because obviously God, we're still saving money again. The shot isn't even relevant. Look, look. It's the most emotional moment in the entire movie franchise. James Horner composed the death and franchise. rebirth of Spock. Quite specific. Thank you. Um, well, they but... could have avoided this if they had done a previously on Star Trek. But they, <laughs> well, they already did do one, though. No, but the and point is... Already... The... At least when these are Sarah... alternate takes. <laughs> That's true. Are these alternate takes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, different camera views the, after oh, the movie was, was done the last time in the I, good Star Trek movie <laughs> <laughs> after they, they finished the movie remember um, they had to reshoot it to have this plot so there were multiple yeah they had, to add, this. They had they to add this that's augmenting that's what augment means that's just a zoom Kirk <laughs> the, all, the, the scene yeah. that they reshot was the one with the mind melds with uh... yeah mm 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 and then he, he says, remember. Remember. You can tell Hart Bennett, who came from TV, wrote this movie because of how many times it recaps the last one. So what do they actually want yeah. to do with Spock's Katra? Do they just want to, like, put it in the Katra pool? Because they can't, like, put it into a new person. There's no people we're gonna available. Put, we're going to put it in his body, on Genesis. But he doesn't have a body yet. His Maybe Sarek wants it because he has some fatherly bond and wants his son's memories. That's true, though. That that thing that's like fourteen years old when we find him on Genesis, um, it's not. It doesn't have Spock's memories. It's just its own Vulcan child that we like take over with Spock's DNA. Bibs. That that script was a bit iffy there. They said transporter and standby test energize. Response was ice uh, energizing now. Yeah, that's that's good.
Oh, how did they go get permission? By being off screen for a few scenes. <laughs> Spock took Sarek's memories from Picard at the end of reunification. They had yep, Katra yep. orbs on Vulcan. Sarek wanted to take Spock's Katra too. Maybe it's Vulcan tradition. I mean, now it's so, Vulcan tradition, whatever it is. The movie's only now getting started. Before that was all like cheering and toasts to the old days. I miss Kirstie Alley. You know, this is also space ravioli. Kirstie by the way. Alley misses Kirstie Alley. Right. <laughs> Uh, I'm hungry for space ravioli. Anyone else? <laughs> this is very reminiscent of the big space baby in TNG, for sure. And then there was that the um, planet where Kirk's Kirk um, doesn't know Spock is was... even alive until Savik tells him much later. Everything Kirk does to the point is to help McCoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, chat. Um... I don't know if I like the microphone. You should have saved though. this one for e you should have saved this for Easter. We should have watched this next week. <laughs> he is risen. <laughs> it oh, is basically see, that motif. Uh, the discovery thing about the child screaming a planet apart, that came from here. Spock is a child <laughs> screaming a planet apart. God. That's true. Uh, I was so it's bad. It's canon. It works. Is this this guy this so guy bad. looks so much like uh what's his name? And he sounds like him too. Um, yeah, it, he sure sounds like someone for sure. The, yeah, guy, the guy no. who plays the cop in Jumanji. He's, he sounds. He's no. He no. He, he sounds like, like um, the mustache. Tuvok. He sounds. He sounds so Tim much Russ. like the actor who plays Team Russ. Thank you, Tim Russ. Let me boost the audio real quick. Admiral Cartwright. <laughs> you know that's, that's uh, he doesn't look Peters. anything like Cisco's yeah. dad. <laughs> Peters, yeah. No, but uh, he's an admiral in <laughs> Star Trek Four and Six, uh, so we'll see him very soon. By the way, I like how uh, Starfleet yeah, security like is me when McCoy is yeah, trying every, to get every Star Trek movie has the same twenty actors, so you know. Look, it's uh, Paramount is a family paramount paid people to be on retainer and they're making use of those people <laughs> that's what they also you know directors like to work with certain people actors like to work with certain people so paramount was giving people a deal where they were paying them a certain amount so like a salary and then they're going to do they're basically they are going to use them for x number of movies a year or not and You'd think but they couldn't do they couldn't do guy. it with anybody else. Paramount yeah. is where all Star Trek characters live and party. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Uh <laughs> by planes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty fun. Yeah, this is that's was... the Battle of Britain, remember? DS9. Oh. It's a whole oh, yeah, yeah. The, that's what I'm the, it's, it's called dogfighting. Just Have you talked to someone about there. these annihilation fantasies? But uh, again, we have holograms that we really don't see in. Uh... That was a pretty good futuristic effect, by the way. This is like the and Tatooine here McCoy Barbie speaks to a proto Ferengi. Cue the cantina music. Yes. And there's, there's definitely some Star Wars influence here. Yeah. Even the guy who McCoy Oh, approaches. yeah, that guy in particular. He's, oh, that's very Star Wars. Pretty. No <laughs> singing. Genesis? Yeah. Where's it's the werewolf? Me. Where's the astronaut? I love the lamp in the background too. It's not even a lot. I lamp. hear him new. It's like a so he's like this is he's just a Yoda. Part Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> yeah, it's part of Yoda species. By the way, uh, Starfleet security is like the FSB over here or the KGB over here. They're always listening behind every table. Like, we're going to have to talk to you, Admiral McCoy. He's very um queer. <laughs> like, he's coded as queer. 
Anyway, let me show. Yeah, I was wondering Head that cannon, too, McCoy. Like, section isn't 31 that helped organize Kirk's down? breakout of McCoy. So are you wondering, Ryan? <clears throat> how how he could possibly get a permit to go to Genesis? Yeah, many perm many permits. Look, everybody turns around. Wait, how do the people even know about this? Yep. It's true. Isn't this a state secret that just came up like yesterday? Yeah, the Mutara Nebula was turned into the planet Genesis. It's not even on the star charts. I guess it's hide. Actually, no, it's not hard to hide the disappearance of a nebula because light speed. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I like, there was a scene in the last movie where McCoy says, my God, man, we're talking about... Is this Universal Carl Weathers? <laughs> no. You... R.I.P. Universal I'm Armageddon. so obviously not Carl Weathers. Yeah, I was so... thinking about that earlier. Um, Look at that nice matte painting, though. I'll never be able to, to meet him at a Comic-Con and recreate the Predator handshake. <laughs> Where in the world are you gonna look for Spock's brain? <laughs> you got the whole galaxy to search. <laughs> the funny, funny, oh no. Funny film. I don't think that's canon. I think that's not canon as of TNG. Birdie hit a nut cake? It's supposed to be nutty as a fruit cake. But I wonder if that's the end of the future. Yeah, it's evolved. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting how Spot McCoy tried to the pinch but failed. My head tell is that he d doesn't understand McCoy's body well enough or doesn't have the control of McCoy's body to do it at the moment. Or Federation Security has anti nerve pinch coats. It, it could be padded. It could be padded. So that is totally fair. Padded? That would, that would do it. If you can't, you have to pinch pretty hard to hit someone's nerves. I love Sulu here. He's just pulling stuff out of his jacket. He's so fabulous. It's the closest we come to having a... a f well, he was kind of flamboyant when he was fencing. But he has a little wand. No, you fool. Oh, and why, 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 why? Okay, so Federation security is a joke, right? Sometimes. Oh, it's convenient my. to the plot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. He stole that from Han in A New Hope. <laughs> Boring conversation, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good code word. The Kobayashi Maru has set sail. <laughs> Oh, what do you know? Mm -hmm. In Star Trek V, we're also going to go to the Promised Land. It's going to be great. To quote an unused bit of six script, I always hope that, that if given one the choice to remember betray this my friends the or other my country, side of things. I'd have the courage to betray my country. Oh, there's writing crop guy. Yeah, the weirdo. <laughs> what were you saying, Soma? It, it, only in the future film was going to be one of these members of the truth on the other side of things. Uh, what do you mean? We'll talk about it when we get to that film. Okay. But, um, this guy's also like a dashing, a handsome officer, but we make a fool of him. Oh, you fool. Or her, shoot him. He looks like Richie Cunningham. He looks like he's about to die. So.
He's real close to her face. <laughs> I think they're doing dramatic acting. Or Michelle. For some reason, this plot reminds me of the very first Deus Ex game. <laughs> Honestly, or I just shoot him. We have a stun setting, it's fine. Yeah, this movie does some of the lighter side oh, stuff that's that we Mr. get. I was looking at IMDb to figure out who that admiral was earlier. Um, and there was someone credited as Mr. Adventure. I was like, who the heck is that? What does that mean? Oh. <laughs> get in the closet. He's actually so credited as Mr. Adventure. Soon. That's great. That's so funny. Okay. We get amazing shots. But I think, by the way, the Excelsior is actually a more beautiful ship. The original Excelsior, Excelsior class is my favorite good. starship design. We well, get to see it in this movie, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, so. We saw Don't it in the last movie. You're going movie, to wear those reading glasses movie. during a sting operation. Oh, we're taking over the Enterprise again? No way. It's the start of a long tradition. I think Stealing they the replaced the Kobayashi Maru test later. With a test to see if you can take over a starship. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, in the motion picture, also he kind of commandeers the Enterprise. Like I mean, he's authorized. Honestly, to... that'd be a very good uh, Academy test. Is you constantly get new ideas on how people will take over a ship. True. And yeah. you can just constantly stop that. White hat. The. Uh... What have we tried implementing a oh, security protocol? Yeah, that protocol? reminds me. <laughs> <laughs> Radical thinking there. It'll never work. Star Trek Picard kind of pushes it to its its limit, so you know it's just I don't think anyone could fall for it. It's anymore. whistle. So you want some Starfleet penetration testing, is what you're saying? This guy's hilarious. Yeah. He's, he's like the most oh, dignified. Oh, target cops. Those were in season one TNG. Oh wow. The target cups. What do you mean yeah, I remember. Uh, uh, we were on the left side of the screen. Doing, They're target doing. brand cups. I do love this bit of the film. This is a great bit of the film. It's it's a great bit of comedy. I have and found Scotty a fan story about the specific reason why Kirk cheated and more crucially got away with it asterisk. James Doohan does an amazing job of uh, doing the comedic effect. Sabotage. VGER blast a beam there. Um, this is the same space stock we get in TNG, so... Except, Except they just push in, it's like times. 10 times the size. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but same mushroom shape. That's an interesting they reuse, bridge. They reuse the footage. Yeah, yeah. That um, power fluctuation's a little concerning, my dude. That helm <laughs> officer was in Voyager, right? A few times? Or, uh, I don't that helm officer is... Robert Morton from uh, uh, Robocop. Robocop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's where he's from. Okay, thanks. Probably on the Paramount payroll. And Dick Jones was uh, Captain Jellico. Jellico, right. I had to kill Bob Morton because he made a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. Uh, I think... Miguel like Fur, in this meanwhile, his dad is working on June. Oh, that's interesting. Um, the Dyson Sphere closing was pretty fun in TNG. I think they used that a few times. The Dyson Sphere prop comes up a couple other times in other episodes. The door the prop. The ship still has the battle scars on it from the prior movie. It, yep. they were, they're going to decommission it. So that's why we're stealing. We're stealing a decommissioned ship, which is why it's not illegal. The doors was section no, thirty-one illegal. trolling Scotty. I'm pretty. I mean, yeah. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it's still illegal. They they make a big deal out of how illegal it is in next movie. Yeah. And uh, they they sabotage the transwarp of the other ship. And so that they steal it at the end of the later film. <laughs> 
<laughs> but this, this is comedic gold. I can't believe. I don't think anybody else nails the uh, the counter climax, the anti climax that this moment does for Star Trek. <laughs> the score during this sequence is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I the whole, the whole sequence is amazing. It is the best part of the film. Yeah. Hanna Barbera as sound effects. <laughs> he uh, falls on a banana peel, huh? Bye. Why weren't you already prepared for warp speed? <laughs> <laughs> Because the director is a master of suspense. Leonard Nimoy. Good thing a dumb probe is on its way to give Kirk and crew a pass. <laughs> dumb probe? The, sp the whale probe is the best. The whale probe is very highly intelligent. Just because <laughs> it doesn't speak English doesn't mean it's not intelligent. Oh yeah, so that was the thing. They were taking out the the he Enterprise. He was too busy doing his nails. <laughs> Scotty was chief engineer, and that's how he messed up this ship. That's what you get Correct. for trying to reassign. All the, probes, uh, by definition, are dumb. They only record. They don't talk. That and it's still talks. disappointing that Uhura is left out of the Enterprise's final voyage. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good point, though. Every Star Trek movie they made, they thought it was going to be the last. So, here's where we are. Well, the next one, they knew they were going to do another one. Well, there's a fair chance they're going to do another one, because... Shatner wanted Because they had to give it one, one to Shatner as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. Whatever, whatever Nimoy got, Shatner had to get. Whatever Shatner got, Nimoy had to get. Yeah. That was part of their contract. She put a dude in a closet. It was an important job. I'm pretty sure Shatner <laughs> didn't think his glory hound would kill the franchise. Wait, wait. Does that mean there's no Uhura on in Sounds the next like movie? Every season because she's finale still here. Yeah. One after season five. They do. Yeah, she has to be there to keep saying, "Admiral, I'm receiving whale song." Yeah, yeah. And then she's obviously in six. Okay, he's totally got to be dead, though, right? He's yeah, sitting I mean, in the snow, bare yeah. naked. No, 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 no. He's he's screwed. And no one fed the Vulcan. The... Vulcan physiology is just built different. Okay, they evolved from an so... extra hot desert planet. Why would the baby adapted for cold though? Sports, yeah, Sports is just a is a boy sounds like who's every generation finale. His normal age. So he ate it's snow. That's what he did for like three weeks. Anyway, let's not think too much. But I guess he ate those uh, ravioli that was at his coffin. I think the ravioli became Spock, actually. Spock has had a very confusing life. He died, was was resurrected, went back in time, Why died would... in the past. So now his I forget Grissom is his still little plaque says he died at a year before he was born. Why would a why would a Vulcan child be eight to ten Earth years of age? <laughs> Don't worry about that. They just say no 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 approximation. Vulcan years. Ravioli Ravioli Spock gets Rissaroli. <laughs> also, Starfleet doesn't have any other warp capable ships. Why is this guy such a coward? Yeah. Look, this dude just wants to keep with protocol. He commands an Oberth class starship, okay? He's not no, he's, chosen for his leadership skills. He's in the wrong fleet. He he should go <laughs> work for the Vulcans. Don't worry about it, hee hee. Oh, the Grissom is a, a real submarine in the USS in the US Navy. I think you'll find that a lot of the ships named in the motion like, pictures are real ships. <laughs> like the Enterprise. Like all of them. <laughs> Goodbye. 
Wow. We get this bird of prey footage so much. Look, yeah, it's their own fault for being in this class of ship. And Oberth <laughs> yeah, is built really to is. die. Oberth is like scout class. It's a science vessel. Oh, um, Even that last weird Russian e- ship from TNJ? <laughs> that weird Russian ship from... But, like, the Enterprise is officially a science vessel, too, right? Why? I feel like they should have... No, well, the, the Enterprise is a battle cruiser. I saw. The Enterprise, uh, but it's now. officially a science it's vessel. It's a dreadnought. It's cl- it's classified. No, it's not a dreadnought. It's classified as a battle cruiser. It's just a cruiser. Cruiser. Um, last film we discussed how what shields were up if the shields were down, and what are what is the difference between Don't the screens? Don't poke your coworkers, Spock. <laughs> so in the outrageous Okana, um, when they're using lasers to lock onto the Enterprise, it's mentioned that they have lasers. navigational shields. Yeah, so it must be some those screens. So I, there's some kind of just, and it's, it's different you know, than deflectors. This is only the second time Christopher Lee drove a vehicle that turned into a time machine. <laughs> the dangers of fighting. This predates. What what year was this? Because Back to the Future was 1985, so yeah, this came out first. Yeah, hmm. it's made but, um, first, he's not but the... he's more, he's much more Doc Brown than Captain Krug. Also, we use it as a time machine. The next movie, not this Lord. movie. So the time machine. Right, came he doesn't get it. he doesn't get the time travel in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's commanding the time machine. <laughs> He's just Christopher. Leonard Nimoy plays three characters in this film. Fuck, you're right. Yeah. You swear <laughs> on my Star Trek stream? I got Lord of the Rings what? in the brain. I mixed them keep... up. You know, like, uh, in preparation for this, I think a One, couple months ago, I watched... Turbo Lift Computer. Two, McCoy's Spark Imitation. Three, Spockle. Christopher <laughs> Lee is Count Dooku. <laughs> Snape, Snape killed Dumbledore. So I'm more card, I right? It's a political idealist, not a murderer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I rewatched the TOS movies, and I have to say, we are as lucky as the Wilson Harry Potter was a fan. science vessel. Probably had crappy shields, just like the pastor did. We got a string of amazing TOS movies, and um, the 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 production design. You know, I don't know about the script every time, but the production design was really amazing. It's really a joy to watch. So to answer your question or statement, your review, the deflectors, per Gene Roddenberry, the deflector emits a beam in front of the ship to yeah. push little particles and stuff out of the path of the ship so you don't collide with it at high relativistic speeds. Yeah, it's a dish. Shields, shields are you know, defensive for combat and, and things that are beyond the, the capabilities of the deflector. But what I think is interesting is that the deflector is this giant dish on the outside of the ship and the shields, the shield generator is internal somehow. Right, right. You right. don't see anything of it on the outside. So it's like, uh, how does that work? But I guess the, the deflector beam is projected way out in front of the ship. So it has to be big and it's like narrow. It's like a narrow beam now way out instead of a bubble around the no ship. reason to try and grab this one. Wow, Chris, you're <laughs> such a big, strong warrior fighting a worm. <sighs> Barehanded to kill a worm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I feel you, Robo, but what I was saying was though, in Outrageous Okana, they say it's navigational shields, which is different than their... Yep, that's, no, that's, that's the deflector screens. It's the same thing. Okay, okay, that's what I was saying. Um, it's just, it's a matter well. of it's a matter me. of it's a matter of which writer wrote the dialogue, and there was in one of the Star Trek documentaries, one of the writers was talking about how Gene Roddenberry sat him down and explained the difference. So yeah, you right. was unhappy. So you guys, um, you guys said he uh, Marcus dies in the in the first ten minutes of this movie. He's still alive. He dies in the first act. How about that? No, we're not. Yeah. We're halfway through. He's actually, he's actually been on screen a lot more than I thought he was. You guys are but like it's still, it's still the first. It... It's still the first act. 
No, we still have to make it fully emotional. So we have to have him on screen a lot. So when we stab him, the audience feels bad about it. He dies towards the end of the movie. And then when we get to Star Trek VI, we understand Kirk's prejudice. Maybe, you know, your review, maybe it's because people don't think of this as a standalone movie. They think of it as part and parcel with... uh, Yeah, Star Trek II. Two, three, and four are a trilogy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, three, um, and four are a trilogy. Yeah, one was so messed up that they just had to say, "Let's let's do something like coherent." I now. saw I three think, boots. I think one movie. gets a bad rep. No, no, but just critically, it does. Though, but just, to be fair, it's only because it deserves it. They they never, <laughs> they, never they never reference what happened in one in any of the other movies. So, like Moon and I have a theory that it, it exists in its own canon. Um, also because so Star Trek movies... 2 is a soft reboot of a soft reboot. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's probably fine. Don't, I wouldn't worry about well, it. Well, don't even bother. At least, with the, at least the uniforms. <laughs> the uniforms are way better in Star Trek 2 than they were in the motion picture. But we'll never, we'll never see the likes of moist androids again. And Star Trek V is a soft reboot of a soft reboot of a soft reboot. I think it five isn't coming off directly off the tail of four, but it's, it's not. It's, it's really, it's a sequel. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not really part of a trilogy in the same way, but it's yeah. It's not. It's not its own. Like it's not. Re- Moist androids. Story. Band oh, name. I, I call it. Yes, we swapped Spock actors off screen. Okay. Oh, what is yeah. that? What did Shaz say about Moist androids? That it's a band name. Band name. Okay. Yeah, that could be a band name. What kind of what Star genre Trek of music would Moist androids play? We're just making Polaris, up that's now. your boss. Is this appropriate? And it gained a billion new deck levels. Oh yeah. When 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 uh Shatner directed, there's like what deck seventy six or something. Yeah. <laughs> so I gotta tell you, um I was like probably fourteen years old at the time when I saw this. And I didn't like really have access to too many other movies or shows. So I, I really needed the scene. Back in my day, I saw uh, Star Trek Three at the Cineplex <laughs> for a quarter. And it was rated PG. And I had to walk uphill in the snow both ways. No, Speaking this is back pre- in my PG-13, day. Isn't it? We need everybody to go through and uh, see. I think that's what true. The, yeah. What is the first Star Trek movie that you're older than? For me, it's First Contact. For me, Nemesis. Oh, the first Star Trek movie that you're older than, so you're born before that movie? Yeah. Yep. Yes. For me, it's uh, Boy Tom. I was one. born for uh, Undiscovered Country. I guess Voyage uh, Home. When did Voyage Home come out? Uh, 86? I said this is a, 86? I am not telling. This is this is only barely before PG-13, apparently. The first PG-13 movie was... was uh, Two months later, it apparently. Was, uh, Red Dawn. Gremlins 2 and... Star Trek well, Insurrection, okay, yes. but only There's barely. Debate. I'm there older than debate. Wrath of Khan. Temple of Doom and Gremlins was the reason why they created the PG-13 rating. Oh, okay, right, and yeah. Was, and Red Dawn is credited as being the first PG-13 movie, but it was the first PG-13 movie by release date, but there was a movie right. already... That was already given a PG-13 rating before Red okay, Dawn, but it yes. didn't release until after Red Dawn. It's a really... People are like, that's uh, <laughs> uh, a technical... Which one's the first? <sighs> Does it matter? But I can't remember the other one that got it. I mean, then, oh, I mean just... If you are I mean, interested in PG-13 weird movie, little quirky facts... The first PG-13 rating given was given to Gremlins then. 
a oh, little bit released think. until after another PG thirteen movie. I think that's reasonable to just phrase it that way. Here, there's a there's a website here that has the explanation. I'm trying to find it. Uh, so Temple of Doom and Gremlins, they didn't get they didn't get PG thirteen, but they're the reason why PG thirteen was created. Red Dawn and the Flamingo Kid. The Flamingo Kid. Oh, was that was the first. Rating to... first that's okay. like but then Red Dawn came out came out in theaters before it, I think. Um, so this kind of so if, so if a pub quiz question is is phrased, did we as talk about what, how the movie was first was given a first PG thirteen rating? Uh, so two things. First, this yeah, we are head. about to murder the what's his face. Who cares? Good. This is his death. Doctor Marcus. And two, I have a question that I don't want an answer to, which is <laughs> Spock. Vulcans do their pond far thing Watership every seven down years, and for him, that's an, at an accelerated pace because seven years is like twenty minutes for him. By the end of this movie, Spock is like seventy. Uh. So how did that work? Again, I don't want an answer to this. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question, actually. You're just putting out the question. So She's there's like, yeah, a lot that was going on off camera, is what you're saying. Yeah, there there was some other stuff going on that we didn't see. Don't think about is the answer. Yeah, um, but I gotta say this is a really beautiful set, and as cheesy yeah. as it is, looking back, we actually got a good fight scene. Oh, out of did it against uh, Doctor Back to the Future over here. Because like the original series was an action show. We got some good punches. Oh, Ellie cams. I thought that was introduced in TNG. Oh, wait, no. DS9? I don't know. Unless between Genesis and Vulcan, Spock had another growth spurt. <laughs> oh, he had a growth spurt. Anyway, look, that's a kind of sketchy cloaking device, Chris. Like, we can see you. <laughs> How do you mean they can see him? They can see him on sensors? No, just physically looking out the window. There's a bunch of distortion. Yeah. Oh, um, it's like the Predator cloak. But in but space, on a black background, you, you, would, you wouldn't like be able to see that. Version. Do you want to raise shields, Kirk? I would think you learned your lesson after the last time. <laughs> no, but now you can spot should, a cloaked ship with your naked he should eye. Blind, he should blind fire it. Just. I like um, that they're whispering, too, just in case Kirk hears them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we do the same thing in Star Trek Six. Like, the thing's got to have a tailpipe. Um... Yeah, just blind fire the distortion. Uh, so canonically, when the Enterprise is re-entering the atmosphere, um, it, it becomes self-aware. I don't know if you knew about that. What? It becomes sentient. So, sentient. If you just fire a phaser... 360 degrees, you'll hit the cloaked ship at some point. So, you know, all you need is a, a laser pointer to find a cloaked ship, really. Well, no, you'd have to fire it 360 degrees in a sphere because 360 yeah. degrees would just be in, in a, 2D. A, a disc. In a plane. In a plane. Yeah. I feel like maybe Will Riker um, should have watched this movie. Oh, no, the, the dog. I see this battle scene between Enterprise and the Bird of Prey was a test bed for CGI effects companies who wanted a slice of TNG's pie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very TNG, that uh, little electric... electric <laughs> now the bird of prey loses half his crew. <laughs> to the thrusters! Two separate lines! Did they say we can't fire again? They said we can't raise the shields.
I like the mirroring there, saying the exact same things for each captain. I mean, this is almost comical because they took a damaged ship to their rescue mission. So. The enter, the enterprise would never be defeated by a bird of prey. <laughs> this thing's like the Millennium Falcon at this point, like this old junk bucket. <laughs> you just shot them. <laughs> so, um. We had the auto destruct sequence in a TOS episode, I believe season three, but this one sets the pattern for all future auto destruct episodes. Um, also, the past codes are really lame, like zero to A. <laughs> yes, can you just shoot him again? TNG even reuses those same Do they not codes. see how damaged the Enterprise was at the beginning of the battle? It's a gang of criminals, Kirk! Oh. You think Klingons are gonna observe things and <laughs> think about it? Computer initiates self-destruct. Authorization, my dick. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Don't you make me take away your voice text to speech privileges. <laughs> what? How is this code? It's like code one, priority one, 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 one. One, zero, one. Engage, zero, one. evasive maneuver, Kirk one. This is a horrible scene. Like, we have an execution of hostages. Yeah, but it's just David, so whatever. 1.21 gigawatts. Oh. It's fine. David comes back in TNG. He, he makes it out. He's okay. <laughs> Um, I want to say however brief this moment is. Um, Isn't he addicted to drugs, though, in the yes. TNG episode? He gets better. Yeah. You, have to get, you have to get the... After the, you, you the dark age. ...of the stream yet. We, that's how we make jokes. We couch the obvious in them. Um, well, that's great. Let's uh, do it. I want to say, you know, as brief as this is, as brief as their relationship and their love Evening was. All. Hey, um, the love between Kirk and Dr. Marcus was real in their last moments. Very well acted. Which Dr. Marcus? This Dr. Marcus or the no, other this, one? This Dr. Marcus, son, son Dr. Marcus. Hi, it's Scoopy Scoopy Dog Dog. <laughs> like you said, Ryan, we don't yeah, even remember yeah. his like. Do it, do it, do it. He, 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 it's just him because we can't lose Savick and we can't lose Spock. Like the whole movie's about Spock. Oh, Although I don't, I don't think a Klingon would stab somebody in the back. At least not the Klingons we come to know in TNG. Yeah, true. Well, I, yeah, they would, especially if the Klingon was named Duras. Duras. Yeah. The, These are the Klingons especially who the had ones a, we one meet in TNG. with a worm. Yes. Away oh, team deaths 37. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> by the way, but oh my god, Shatner should have gotten an Oscar. Oh, speaking of Oscars, by the way. David, come on. You an Oscar. bastards. Shatner's you an amazing actor and he brings it. He brings it into these movies. But uh, look, look. Do they, uh, he's, I mean, competent. Okay. Look, come on. Come on. Don't worry about it. He's on the magic resurrection planet. He's going to get up in like five minutes. N-O-M, N-O-M, N-O-M. <laughs> it didn't quite, quite work with the text-to-speech, but... 
This scenery is delicious. Yes, I was going to say, <laughs> nom, nom, nom. they have some really nice industrial <laughs> design. But, um, okay, so speaking of I never stolen trust Oscars, no, I think that's not, and I never referring will. to the scenery. I'll never forgive them for killing my son. Yes, a great line. Sir. I mean, I'll forgive you him know for your killing son my boy. for all of two I'll, days. I'll give Shaq this. He's relax. certainly doing a lot of acting right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but <laughs> it's in Star Trek. Don't you most... know, everyone says your love for your child is instant and unconditional. He, he, as soon as he saw him, he knew it was his. And so he, he had this deep fatherly love. I mean, the, the, before this man he never it, met before. I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. You know, he has a regret that, that he came late. And maybe he could have saved his son if he didn't arrive late. You know, the man's in agony. They're still assuming that the Enterprise is fully prepared and is fully staffed. <laughs> Even though it's clearly very badly battle damaged already. Yeah. But I wanted to say in uh, Star Trek, the motion picture, they were going to they were going to win the award for uh, best uh, soundtrack for the picture. But the movie critically flopped. That would be the way. best soundtrack would would be a Just fitting, a, so, but, a fitting award for that but, film. But the reason they didn't give it to oh. was because the film didn't get any other awards because, you know, you want to sweep, right? Oh, I remember what was about I don't to think happen. That matters. I do. Well, I think so. It came out in '79. I think it was up against John Williams' score for Superman, which I believe won that year. So okay, it's better for me than I would remember bring up it. Superman. <laughs> um, thank you for Dal that. Dal L. Dal L. Yes, Dal L. Um, this is genuinely a much better movie than it than I remember it being, and now it seems like yeah, what you say it yeah, is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, even the auto destruct sequence is really well done, actually, because. Uh, but bada bing bada boom. The suspense, the music. Um, and like I said, I even wind up liking the fi fight scene that Kirk has with the bad guy at the end. One one a. That's your password. It's a three character password. Look, we were basically the voice off of, Here comes we the reason of... Janeway joined Starfleet. Punch cards. Murder. Okay. She wanted a murder. No, self-destructing the ship. This... Chainway loves destroying the ship. <laughs> T uh, the TNG That's Enterprise. Just, they might the as well code. have made the password admin. Come on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's also voice coded. Okay. 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 But um, by it the way, it would have been Dana interesting if they did the 2009 it helps joke that this where is before the every ship became a Chekhov. CGI smorgasbord of indistinct greeblies. That's what the type of password an idiot would have on his luggage. <laughs> hey. So hey, this hey, Enterprise hey. felt like a real character. <laughs> yeah, that's true, though. We are now losing our um, original Enterprise from the original series. And yep. the next one is the refit. So, you know... No, no, no. This is a refit. The next one is the Yorktown rechristened Enterprise. Okay, right. This well, this was going to be refit, and then it wasn't still... refit. This is still the original Enterprise, though, uh, despite being a refit. Yeah. You're right. It, it, it's a chip of, of, of chip Thesis, of Thesis Enterprise, yes. Yeah. So yeah. this is based on a password schema Thesis. called a rolling password. Thesis. You look Thesis. at a clock and adjust yeah. it, and you have to know the algorithm a... for it. That's a real Navy thing, by the way. All of you decrying it are asterisk the idiots, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, really nice lighting. I want to say, you know... Hard like, toss-up uh, between this and Thunderbird 2's crash landing as the most emotional vehicle destruction of all time. <laughs> yeah, that was a good... That's true, though. We don't see this again until generations. The ship burning up in the sky. Thunderbird 2's crash landing. What about the from loss the, of the from Enterprise that puppet e? show? <laughs> Off-screen? It was off screen of a throwaway Warf line from Worf. Not Worf's fault, yeah. That was baloney. I think more importantly is how how dirty they did the Enterprise F, and then they were supposed to name the ship Picard. They weren't supposed to name it the Enterprise, and then they just changed their mind last second. Like, that was a terrible decision. Get out. Um, get out of there. Great line, though. Because uh, we blew up the bad guys, 
and our favorite Hi. ship. Hi. There's a version of the model as well. <laughs> yeah, true. Original Gundam's last shooting is up there too, I think. Whoa. So back oh, the oh, block uh, the model? No, they had a special uh, model that they blew up. Yeah, they broke the model. Um, so, and they had a special saucer section that they made it with like paper on the top to to make the explosions explode out. Oh, so nice compressed compressed air. Um, rest in pieces. Rust in pieces. <laughs> great, great soundtrack though, and great angles. And we get to see the ship burn up. Um, the DeLorean in Back to the Future Part 3 getting crushed by a train. How about that emotional vehicle destruction? At Sam Ali, oh man, I remember that from the 90s. Always thought it was crazy the Navy shot Thunderbird 2 down. Even weirder was the guy given the order to shoot it down on the radio has Tay same voice. My god, Bones, what have I done? Actor as Scott Tracy. The same thing you've always done, Jim. Give us a chance to survive. Or turn... whatever so, um, into a chance You read to the script, Jim. <laughs> this, this planet is unstable, so it's a lot like... Unbelievable. Um, Unbelievable. It's a lot like the end of Star Wars uh, prequel series, when uh, they have to fight on the uh, Musafar, that molten lava planet. Amazing tree falling on the Klingons. Maybe, uh, maybe we should just leave. Yeah, <laughs> Klingons, you want to shoot everyone and beam up, or just what was the recommissioned Defiant? It was it was Sao Paulo. Yeah, right? after the, the car Defiant was destroyed. But yeah, that was an emotional. And they got a new registry number. They got a completely new registry number. Yeah, it was no longer so an it NX, seems... it was an NCC. Yeah, right. But it seems like so. There seems like there's there's weird rules about that well the excelsior went from nx 2000 to ncc 2000 it didn't change its registry number yeah but it was the same ship so don't worry about it yeah it's unclear it's well unclear the, the bridge of the excelsior the that is are. is refit by the time of star trek 6 so i wonder if like it just got out of got out of beta Weird testing and so they made it into official the bridge yeah, when Sulu's in Yeah, there. they changed they changed the they changed yeah. the the ship slightly between the movies. Love that Klingon observer. The Lord Nacelles change, the saucer section has the details, Greebly's changed, but it's the same ship. I've never trusted Klingons. And I never will. That's because he's hugely racist against them. For the death of my boy. <sighs> You Klingon bastards. You Klingon well, he got bastards. stabbed by a Klingon. Remember the whole execution thing, Kirk? Is it Leonard Nimoy now? Um, they need to do the Katra transfer, and they have to go back to Vulcan to do that. Yeah, thanks. Oh, so he stops aging when he gets off Genesis. This place reminds me of the fire swamps now. <laughs> I have the higher ground. Oh, who That'd never came on the ship with us, did she? She just... No. Right. She stayed behind. She stayed oh, at the yeah. station. Mr. Adventure. So how does she how does she get on the is she in the next movie at all? Yeah. They yeah, she's on the, the HMS bounty because they stop by Vulcan. Yeah, they're on Vulcan to do the transfer. And oh. then they go back to do the court martial. You know, as I was saying before, we're as lucky as Harry Potter fans or any other genre that got like seven Kruger movies. was devastated by the loss of his men. We got some great production. 
Harry Potter um, is is okay. No, but Harry production Potter value. I'm talking okay. production value. Like you know, um, in well, the last it was a movie, huge. It was a it was a money printing factory for a while. You know, um, I I read that you know in the last uh, movie when they find the Horcrux, um, and they have that room full of furniture. They bought up all the antique furniture from people's attics in southern England that they possibly could um, to fill up for that scene. Like they, so much beautiful work goes into making these movies for us to enjoy, and I appreciate. It. Like right now, this giant tree and the trees that fall over—it's all fake. Like uh, I was watching TNG um, at the beginning of Outrageous Okana when Riker and Worf do the the fighting against those uh, weird beasts. I'm assuming from, like, Uhura came to Vulcan with Sarek. My favorite part they of Star it... Trek 4 is when Kirk tells Uhura, get in loser, we're going time traveling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to make it indoors, to make it outdoors, like this is a forest, right? So to make outdoors indoors is really amazing. Um, they did a beautiful job for this movie. That tree. It's like an ant. You fool! You I'm glad at least Christopher's having a good time. Yeah. He gets some one-on-one -on -one combat. He gets a lot of stabbing. He gets a fire swamp. He gets a lead villain role. This place is that basically stove a core for him. Uh, yeah. Extruding out of the ground there, huh? Yeah, the planet's falling apart. Stovacor? Or is this, uh, what's the place to go if they... Great Thor. No, this is Stovacor. He's having a great time. <laughs> Uh, the Klingon costume is fantastic. Um, it's fitted it, um, the actor really well, and it's very intricate. This is why it stops being a movie and goes back to TOS for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really need the Amok Time music going here. Yeah. Um, Lion King basically copies this. Lion King. At the end of Pride Rock. He has to throw a scar over the ledge. Oh, look, there's the lava. It's Lion King, but they killed Simba instead of Mufasa. <laughs> and also, it's the ring where you have to push the golem. Do an edit like and the... upload it. Yeah. He tries to pull him up, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Oh, this looks really jank. Oh, he's going to pull him with him instead. Don't you dare let go, Mr. Frodo. <laughs> hey, by the way, th that's a kick to the head, by the way. So our hero is uh, not pulling Bill, are you sure that's how that those words a... should be emphasized? Have yeah, had. I know. That, that was really that was weird. A weird. It's kind delivery. of strange. There's no music. Enough of you. I... Enough of <laughs> you. <laughs> Enough <laughs> of you. That, yeah. Like, you... That's why they burned witches. Why did he kick his way? hand? It's like, we don't want you to exist. This shirt he has is still pretty blousey, you know, <laughs> underneath his uniform. It's very, very, very blousey. It's pink, too. It's a very theater-esque shirt. It works. Yeah. Now we re-enter being a movie. Yeah. Wow, that's a great tree. Yeah, all right, people production say only studio, Star you don't Trek have to keep showing XD. off. How long is a day on Genesis? <laughs> By the way, 24 hours. The, those clouds looked so, um, like, uh, what is it, sulfuric acid, like Venus? <laughs> they didn't look pretty fr friendly. How come this wasn't in the computer simulation? And where is uh, Dr. Carol Marcus to stop the reaction or whatever she had to do? Is Carol dead? No, she's or not she dead. Just she's leave. She just didn't want to be in this picture. Why did he have to say it in Klingon? Because the because the they're, they're beaming up to the Klingon ship. Yeah, he needs the, the Klingon Enterprise to ship. think that he's Christopher Lloyd. How long the day is depends on whether or not you like prog rock. His 
His pants are very, very well tailored there. Carol Marcus had a deleted scene in Star Trek VI. Oh, no so way. So not dead. He was already making moves on the whale lady in the next movie, so it's not like he's worried about her. This film does directly play into the next one because this is the ship that they've stolen for use yeah. in the next film. Which is found at the bottom of San Francisco Bay and um, does not have a tracking device on it for Fleet Day. We did it. Was we good... searched first Bach. That was yep. a good bit of nostalgia by Picard, right, guys? To pull up the Let's bird Let's start making a new sun. From the bottom of the bay. It felt silly. <laughs> what? All, everything in that... The I will go a Dex to visit uh, the remains of the Genesis Planet. Museum felt silly. Okay. And very much including the resurrection of the Enterprise D felt extremely silly to me. What about oh, the NX01 like, It's kind of like that... It's kind of like that whole series. I didn't mind like, like so seeing like, glimpses of them. It wasn't so bad, but they keep teasing us with the uh, NX01. We get little shots of it, and they like the. You want the NX01 refit? I want no, lower decks well, want to do a crossover NX01. with Fireball XL5. Any NX01, I'm happy with. Like in in the lower deck, Strange New Worlds crossover, they talk like they're going to have to go find the NX01 to get parts. They're like, "No, nah, yeah. we'll just pull a part off the ship." It's like, "No, I want to see the NX01." <laughs> <laughs> um they originally had planned or floated the idea of just using the straight up the akira model from first contact and just being like yeah nobody will notice this they've never seen this shit before really <laughs> they're like no no it is similar in so. design but yeah the nx class is way better you know, so I like the Akira better than the uh, than the yeah. NX. I mean, Steam oh, yeah, this is a beautiful ship. Norway, all those all those first contacts. I'm not saying good. it's not. I just like the, I prefer the Akira. The Akira. Right. Oh, it's this place. We've seen it before. In the f first movie, when Spock's uh, there's Uhura. See, she's here for the next movie. It's all set okay, up. Girl. Oh, she, she yeah. meets him on Vulcan. Okay, thanks. Now, isn't she a criminal? And aren't they criminals? And would he be up, don't worry about that. aiding yes. and abetting? Yes. They, Nick, by allowing no. them to land? Nick's movie. Is, is Sarek in, involved in the court martial? He's, he's in not the room. He's, not, he's 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 he represents the interests of Vulcan. He walks into the court and is like, "And you Klingons are not allowed to commit murder or something." This music is great. Shout out to my boy, the Rockwell class. The Rockwell they, they class? They do actually address it, class? I believe, in terms of letting Kirk off for it. Yeah, they say you're punished with a demotion to Cassidy. They say in light of your service to the galaxy or something like that. That's your punishment. Diplomatic immunity. Well, they just saved Sorry. everyone again, so yeah, like they, yeah. they go easy. Oh, I, I just well, looked I mean, up the Rockwell class. That thing's weird. <laughs> it's got a nacelle well, zip tied to the saucer. The this needs really of the many story. outweigh the needs of the few or the legal system. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. So the last movie was about the needs of the many and the needs of the few, but here we actually reverse that because we all got together to save Spock. So the needs of the one outweigh the needs of the We many. traded a lame life for a cool life. <laughs> oh, fairness, his life was always all was probably going to be forfeit anyway by that thing on Commander. Yeah, probably. Beautiful Vulcan sets. Um, this is not the same one from Motion Picture, which took place in Yosemite Park by the lava for hot springs. So, uh, Ryan, Why I know you hate Vulcan man? mysticism, but here we are. Yeah, we can just cut out this scene. That's why Section Fine. 31 was involved. <laughs> this this lady is the same lady from Star Trek 1 um, to Pow. High Priestess. I wouldn't even be surprised if she was the same lady from a mock time. She's the one who was hanging out with Archer and found the cure Shara. Yeah, yeah. 
But um, they mentioned in a mock time, Spock comes from like one of the biggest landowning families on Vulcan. <laughs> so he's kind of like. Uh... She's like China in your hand. Amazing I... costumes. Uh, the ancient Egyptian priestess for Vulcan is very well done. As well as the helmet guy in the background. Spock privilege. <laughs> but uh, you gotta give Beat it to him. It. Came out with a really Wait, good. That's... Hang on, that's Talar. That's not Depel. Yeah. Sorry. Who's Talar? Who is the keeper of the Katra? So, um... So, oh, God. No, Talar, you're doing the same thing to Pow did. We don't need the old English here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but only some of your sentences are old, well, like Middle English, but... It was T-Pow's day off. <laughs> T-Pow. T-Pow is on her we... lunch break, but I will perform the ceremony. While she is away. I wonder where Leonard James Acker is during all of this. I heard that the Texas speech made, made her sound like Taylor, uh, yeah, Taylor Swift. t -Pow. I enjoyed it anyway. I guess the Vulcans are big on peer pressure. <laughs> he becomes head of Starfleet in Teach Ebooks. Yeah, Talar, it would have been better if you got Tapau here, because Tapau has literally done this already. Mm hmm. What if they Famous accidentally Vulcan put McCoy's mind in Spock's body and Spock's mind remains in McCoy's body and he's like, Damn it, Jim! I'm a pony-eared Vulcan! <laughs> I'm not just that green-blooded pony-eared Vulcan. Then, uh, yeah, McCoy would be in his Vulcan people. mind. Oh. <laughs> Get out of this damn Vulcan mind! And Spock replied that she'd be out of his. Very dramatic lightning. Very, very well timed. I don't know, they timed it for the storm. That's that's just Vulcan drama. They're going to do a Frankenstein and if absorb the electricity? If this movie was longer, they could have spent days swapping between this, different people. This is literally the point of the film. There's no chance of it failing. <laughs> oh, as Mark Twain would say, there's risk in everything. The point is, it's the right choice. Even Kirk's getting bored now, though. Speed it up to Lar. I wonder how much he got paid for this to be in it for all of like two minutes. Leonard Nimoy. A lot. I mean, he did a voiceover at the start. But he didn't re-record. It was the same voiceover as the end of the last no, movie. No, oh, I mean, it's when it was McCoy. It, didn't, it wasn't the actual oh, yeah, he did. McCoy. Okay, he said like three or four lines. <laughs> Nimoy got a couple bucks. How come this isn't Star Trek 3, The Search for Scotty's Nephew? He died too. <laughs> Something... oh, that's a good point, but did he end up on the Genesis planet? No. What did they do with so... him? Did they just keep him in sickbay? Or... 
Only Spock gets something, the funeral. Wait. Something this film starts <laughs> that continues in the next film. Spock barely remembers who he is. Like he's like you know like basically like an Alzheimer's patient. It's like are you my? They don't know their own child is their own child. They think like I know you from somewhere, but I don't know who you are. And he continues this in the next film where he's like I kind of know you, um, and starting to come back and he. But it, the main way he expresses this, he calls him Adam. Recycled Admiral in the replicator. And then he comes back uh, when he finally calls him Jim. Well, he's going to call him Jim in it's like unclear. 20 seconds. Yeah. It's unclear if replicators are a thing in the movie era, the motion picture era. Yeah, he oh, turns I thought that was an Andorian for a second. No, they just... <laughs> <laughs> the the uh, priestess um, horns. Just her fancy headwear. Yeah. Hey, Leonard. And now we have our allot minute of quoting the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody said that the director came from TV. So this had a Jim, lot of TV. Your name is Jim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Jim. Your name is Jim. Well, it's kind of Jim. You know, um Well, technically it's James, but you know, it's doesn't stop <laughs> well, to say your something. name is Neota. The familiarity thing is though that his name is Jim. Out of danger. <laughs> well, technically, it's out of danger. Yeah, we yeah. truly were the Star Trek Three search for Spark. The real Spark was the friends we made along the way. And this movie is the one and only time that Sorrow and Spock are on speaking terms. Yeah. You know, in Christianity, like they have this story. Him. <laughs> <laughs> they have this story, the prodigal son. There's like the son that stays home with the dad and helps him uh, run the family farm, and then the son who ran away at like 18 to party and and you know go, go join school and all that. Um, he uh, he asked he, for his inheritance, and he took and his then, inheritance, and he left, and then he spent it all on on coke and hookers. Be, yeah. Friend. And then he comes back, and then the father has a feast, saying, hey, my son came back. And the one who stays home is like, hey, what about He's me? I've been, run- I've been running your farm the whole time, and this one's been uh, shirking his responsibilities. But, um, yeah, man. He's pissed. I'd be pissed. It's about the one. He's, it's he's, not, he's about not the wrong, many. man. It's not wrong. I think it's what about it's really one. about is favoritism. <laughs> <laughs> Favoritism. So yes, uh, in a way, um, Kirk and Spock are each other's favorites. Your name is Jim. They have a beautiful friendship. Oh, the TOS theme coming in. It was all worth hug, it, even blowing up the Enterprise. Can we have a hug? No, they just okay, have a, like a he doesn't. He doesn't remember <laughs> everyone, guys. He just remembers Jim. Oh, we will in five minutes time when the next Scotty. release starts. Your name is Scotty. Where would you estimate we belong? You? At his side. But yeah, as it is immediately after this film that that's one starts as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's I remember all next... of you, not yeah. you though. <laughs> and the adventure, adventure continues. continues. Oh, this is one of the best outro themes. Including yes. the email where you can contact the person who made the subtitles? Would David <laughs> count as an awaiting death? And as yeah, Spock, we did. Oh, yeah, nobody. Ca- and as Spock, Carl Steven. Yes, Carl. <laughs> Five people as Spock. <laughs> I'm looking for so Spock. Spocks. You have found him. Oh, yes, he was little... counted. Okay. So yes, we did count David as an away team death, and that, that's the movie. And now the next movie next week is the best one. 
far um, and away the best Star Trek movie. I hope you speak well. I mean, we could do Dory impressions, but that might mm-hmm. be weird. Mm-hmm. Six is the best. Oh, yeah, I forgot to start the event. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. Especially okay. since it turned out that the voice actor for Dory is such a horrible person. Yeah, that it happens a lot. Yeah. And in Baldur's That's Gate a recently. lot of big talk for a movie that doesn't end in Earth's contact. Right through as everyone is nice, that's good. Spouting whale, spouting whale. <laughs> it it sort of ends in first they make first contact with whales. Yeah. And Spock does it. Anyway. It's two more than Voyage Home. Well, well we're just going by numbers. Do porpoises count? Because there was that whole government study where they had a woman living with a dolphin in a flooded house to see if they could teach dolphin uh, the human language. TLDR. And no. you should read up. You should look it look it up and read all about it about about what they did to teach them the human language. Look, nice when a dolphin and a human love each other very much. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Well, oh, no, it's, kind no, of no. it's really weird. Dolphin and then it committed suicide. suicide when they separated them. Can't wait to unpack Oof. my DVD set for the animated series. <laughs> Don't look it up. I still need to watch the animated series. I've got a couple weeks left that I can watch it in. Yep. Nuclear vessels. That'll be next week. For this week, any final thoughts on the movie? Christ- on Christopher Lloyd, perhaps? Does he seem like an <laughs> yeah. actual villain, Christopher Lloyd? Animated series. Oh, Christopher Loki Lloyd underrated. has done great villains. Christopher Lloyd was a villain in uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Thank you, Ryan. He was, he was Judge Doom in Roger Rabbit. He was the voice of. Great um, Scott. The voice of the bad guy in the DuckTales movie. And in. Worst Anastasia. of the trilogy, but still a good movie. He was Drew mm. Blank in Toonstruck. No, I prefer this over for motion picture. But, but worst of the trilogy, two, three, and four. It's True. still a good movie. It's oh, yes, yeah, so the yeah, other yeah. two are worst better. Of, worst of those three. Yes, the other two are definitely way better. Especially four, which is the best movie. And with that, the stream's over. Go away. <laughs> yes, it is. Thanks. Speaking of DuckTales, Alan Young reportedly was terrified to act alongside Lloyd. Okay, now the stream's over. <laughs>